morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning for December 30, 2023, police identify couple killed in St. Thomas. The police have released the identities of the two people shot and killed in Yalasa, St. Thomas, on Thursday evening. They are 71-year-old Valin Strawn and his 70-year-old wife, Elizabeth, both of New Lands, Yalas. It is reported that about 8 o'clock Thursday evening, residents heard gunshots in the area and summoned the police. On arrival of the lawmen, the two bodies were seen lying in a yard. A great Toyota Axio motor car was observed parked in the yard with the front passenger door open. The police recovered three spent casings and one live round. Head of the Era 5 Police Assistant Commissioner Gary Griffiths said that the police are still unsure of the motive for the attack. He appealed to residents with information to contact the police. No plan to displace Kingston Central residents, says the government. The Ministry of Economic Growth and the Job Creation, based on the Office of the Prime Minister, has denied a report that it plans to displace residents of James Street and the Smith Lane in Central Kingston. The ministry issued a statement a Friday in relation to a recent article in the news in which residents expressed their concerns about a plan by government to acquire lands that they have occupied for years. According to the ministry in its statement, the MP for Kingston Central had informed the residents about the government's acquisition and rehousing plan but appointed to a land acquisition advertisement in the news on December 24, 2023 under the newspaper article both of which it said led to misconceptions. The residents reportedly also told the news that they received no assistance from government to rebuild after several of them lost their homes due to a fire on August 16 last year. But the ministry has countered, saying since the fire, it has conducted site visits to the area and has committed to working with residents and their representatives to ensure the provision of sustainability to ensure the provision of sustainable, affordable housing. Further, the ministry said it has been initiating discussions with the MP to schedule a meeting in the week of January 3, 2024, with affected families and residents. It said that the meeting aims to discuss comprehensive redevelopment plans for the area in alignment with the government's urban renewal goals. Taxi operator accused of hitting policeman with a car charged. The 33-year-old taxi operator, who allegedly hit a policeman with a motor car on Knotsford Boulevard in Kingston on November 9, has been charged with attempted murder. He is Peter Johnson of Greater Portmore, St. Catherine. The police say about noon, Johnson was being prosecuted for several traffic offenses when he drove a Toyota Pro Box in the direction of a policeman who was hit by the passenger door of the vehicle. The Corporate Communications Unit of the Jamaica Constabulary Force says that the policeman fired around at Johnson in defense of his life and that Johnson was hit in the leg. He was taken to hospital where he was treated and released. Johnson was subsequently arrested and charged with attempted murder. He is scheduled to appear before the Kingston and the St. Andrew Parish Court on February 16, 2024. JCF warns against the gun salutes to usher in the new year. The Jamaica Constabulary Force is appealing to licensed firearm holders to desist from the illegal and the dangerous practice of gun salutes to ring in the new year. Under Section 51.2 of the Firearms Prohibition Restriction and Regulations Act 2022, the penalty for engaging in gun salutes is a fine of up to $3 million or imprisonment for up to three years. Head of the GCF Corporate Communications Unit, Senior Superintendent of Police Stephanie Lindsay said that in addition to being a criminal offense to discharge a weapon within 40 yards of a gathering and a public thoroughfare, the act could cost the people their lives. In the midst of alcohol consumption and irresponsible behavior, people lose their lives because of an action that should never happen. So we are putting it out there very early. If you think of doing that, think twice, not just from a standpoint that you can be arrested but from the standpoint that you will be charged for murder, she said. SSB Lindsay further urged the firearm holders to be responsible in the handling, storage and use of their weapons 
when attending social events or New Year's Eve celebrations this weekend. She said that the JCF has noted instances where firearm holders inappropriately store their weapons in their vehicles when attending weapon-free events. I want to say to persons to desist from doing that. Do not leave your firearms in your vehicles. Make arrangements prior to. There are some event promoters who will arrange with the security companies to safeguard those weapons, but make prior arrangements. Leave your weapons at home in your safe. It is better to do that, SSB Lindsay urged. It is better to do that. In most instances, you will get to the function and get home safely. Because if you come out and the car is stolen or the car is broken into, you can be charged criminally for that and run the risk of not having the opportunity to get a firearm in the future. So all those things you have to take into consideration, SSB Lindsay said. Licensed firearm holders can also store guns and ammunition at a police station or the Firearm Licensing Authority for safekeeping. Shanika Gray murder trial resumed January 3. Gregory Roberts, the man currently on trial for the 2017 murder of St. James' schoolgirl Shanika Gray, will spend the first week of 2024 listening to evidence from a police forensic specialist when his trial resumes in the St. James' Circuit Court on Wednesday, January 3. The police witness who briefly took the stand when the case was last heard before presiding High Court Justice Bertram Morrison on December 14 is expected to be the 16th out of a projected total of 18 prosecution witnesses to give testimony against the Roberts, who has been in custody for just under six years since his arrest and the charge in relation to the 15-year-old student's gruesome stabbing death. Since the start of Roberts' trial on November 23, there has been riveting, emotional and at times grisly and ominous testimony against the defendant. The court has so far heard a testimony indicating that Roberts took Gray to a location in Irwin St. James where he brutally stabbed her to death on January 29, 2017 and where her body was found three days later. Gray was a grade 10 student of the Green Pond High School in St. James at the time of her death. In a tragic case of irony, she was last seen alive on her way home from the funeral of a schoolmate on January 29, 2017. Roberts and another man, Mario Morrison, was arrested and charged with Gray's murder after the schoolgirl's body was found with stab wounds in bushes in Irwin on February 1, 2017. Morrison pleaded guilty in September 2022 and was sentenced one month later to life imprisonment leaving Roberts as the sole remaining defendant. Morrison would later become a key witness in the prosecution's evidence against Roberts, testifying on November 30 that he and Roberts had sex with Gray after the men picked up the teenager in Montego Bay. According to Morrison's evidence-in-chief, the men then took Gray to Irwin, where Morrison used Roberts' phone to video record Roberts killing the young girl. The trial has so far had a chilling repetition of the word sacrifice in various witnesses' testimonies, including Morrison's evidence, where he stated that Roberts used the word while asking him to video the stabbing. The trial has also included witness testimony from a digital forensic expert who testified to extracting text messages from Roberts that were on a cell phone belonging to Roberts' ex-girlfriend. According to that witness, at least one of those messages from Roberts indicated that he was making a sacrifice while allegedly warning the ex-girlfriend to repay money to him. The ex-girlfriend, who was among the civilian witnesses for the prosecution, likewise testified to receiving a text message from Roberts, which included the same word sacrifice, and that he had also asked if she had received a video from another associate. That associate, another civilian witness, had previously testified that Roberts came to him on January 29, 2017, wearing blood-stained clothes, and then showed him a video of himself, Roberts, stabbing a young girl. Roberts is being represented in the trial by attorneys Chuma Paris and Leroy Equiano. Legal Aid Lawyers to Receive Training in Sign Language The Legal Aid Council has announced that, that Empanel the Lawyers will receive training in sign language come 2024. The move is aimed at improving the Council's efficiency in providing legal advice to members of the deaf community. 
Dan Watson, executive director of the council, says it is also focused on improving service delivery to the mentally challenged and the those in underserved communities. To assist them with the challenges experienced in providing justice services to the disabled community, the LAC says it has also partnered with the stakeholders to assist them with the delivery of service, which includes but is not limited to interpreters. Additionally, the Council says it has been receiving training on intellectual disabilities and developing media resources including Braille to reach the visually impaired.